Hi there and welcome back. For those of you who are joining first time, I am Hasid Thanki, the founder of presentation series called Intro to Individual Life Underwriting. Let's continue with cardiac arrhythmia and let's focus on sinus arrhythmia today. Let me draw a heart here. This is our friend SA node, AB node. Now, arrhythmia that is caused by sinus SA node, that is called sinus arrhythmia. Now, in a normal person, it is possible that due to the respiratory cycle, the inspiration or the expiration, uh, the heart rate may fluctuate and that happens even in normal persons. So that is typical, uh, not pathological. Uh, during the inspiration, the heart rate goes up. So if you follow the ECG pattern, you see the uh, R to R distance. When the heart rate goes up, the R to R distance let me show it here. So during the inspiration, heart rate goes up. And why? Because our friend SA node fires and both the atrials are depolarized. During the inspiration, frequent firing takes place. As a result, heart rate goes up. And we will see on our ECG pattern, R to R distance goes down. During the expiration, the respiratory cycle, the heart rate goes down and we will see R to R distance on our ECG tracings, we can see that it goes up and it can happen with normal persons, that is typical. Um, if you have a person who is diabetic and complications include autonomic uh, neuropathy and or in a person with a transplanted heart, uh, the fluctuation in the heart rate will not be seen for, due to the respiratory cycle. So something that you may want to make a note of it. Let me draw here and it will make more sense. So P Q R S T P Q R S T Now, I'm not a good painter, but try to focus on the basic concept. So, this is called physiological sinus arrhythmia in a medical term. And uh, you count the P's, you count the R's, okay? What happens is this, that there is up and down in the heart rate and that is typical due to the respiratory cycle and uh, that is not of significant concern. Okay, so that is one aspect of the 
dealing with cardiac arrhythmia and if we have to look at and focus on the sinus aspect or the SA driven arrhythmia sinoatrial that causes the arrhythmia so one could be a sinus arrhythmia physiological sinus arrhythmia the another category that you may see that is called sinus tachycardia okay so in sinus tachycardia what happens the <clears throat> SA node frequently fires so you will have more P waves because P waves as we now know represents the atrial depolarization so as a result on the ECG tracing you will see more P waves okay so uh, let me show that here and it will make more sense to you So, if you count the P waves here, this is sinus arrhythmia, this is sinus tachy. So, remember, sinus tachycardia, as we have done in the past, tachycardia is something that is above the 100 bits per minute. Recall the last session. So 60 to 100 is the typical normal range of heart beats per minute or the heart rate. Anything goes above 100 is called tachy. So first and foremost, sinus tachy is something that is more than normal. So that's why it's called tachy. Secondly, it is driven by sinus, the SA node. So you will see P waves driven by SA node. So that is called sinus tachy and because in sinus tachy the SA node fires more frequently so we will see if you count see the P waves here P waves P waves P waves So this is sinus tachy. Now, if someone has a fever, okay, or if someone is exercising, then the heart rate will go up. And why is that? Because that stimulates the SA node, our friend, and as a result, SA node fires more frequently. And that causes more atrial depolarization that is being reflected by having more peace on our ECG tracing. Simple. Okay. Now, dealing with cardiac arrhythmia and dealing with arrhythmia caused due to the you know, SA node of our friend, uh, there could be another category and that is called sinus bradycardia. So, bradycardia, recall the prior session, as we know now that 60 to 100 is a normal uh, range of heart beats per minute. So anything goes below 60 is slow, is called bradycardia. And because it is driven by SA node, the sinus, uh, SA node, sinus driven, and that's why it's called sinus brady. So slow heart rate, okay? So when the slow heart rate is there, what happens, we, we know that the I2R interval will be more. 
So let's take an example here of sinus bradyly. So in sinus bradyly, what happens? And let me give you some further details on the sinus bradyly. So let's say you have someone with a history of uh, or having a hypothyroidism or a hypothermia or obstructive jaundice or even athletes. So in these situations, it goes exactly opposite to the sinus tachy. Instead of seeing more peace in tachy because the SA node fires more rapidly, more frequently, in sinus bradyly, we will see less P waves because SA node slows down. Okay. So let's say this is our ECG tracing. I unintentionally ended up having a significant Q wave. So for those of you who follow this, they will understand. So this is our P, Q, R, S, T, and then what happens? Then you have a long pause, and then you see P, Q, R, S, T. Then you have a long pause, and then you have P, Q. R S T and then you have a long pause and then you have P Q R S T it goes like that so sinus arrhythmia sinus tachycardia sinus bradycardia so you see and, and look at the this is your R. This is your R. This is your R. So look at the R to R distance. As the heart rate goes down, the R to R distance will go up. Okay. So now, with amongst this way to look at the sinus arrhythmia, there is one more way in which our friend the SA node, because either injured or partially infected, so suddenly fires more rapidly and sometimes suddenly fires very slow so the heart rate goes up and down up and down and that is called because the SA node because the uh, uh, SA node is sick so in some literature you will see sick sinus syndrome and in some medical literature uh, they label it as Tachy Brady syndrome and why is that? Because the name, the phrase explains what is going on when we look at the ECG tracings. So it goes techy, so there are times you see that it goes fast and there are times that it slows down, so that's why it's called Brady. So techy Brady syndrome or because our friend SNO is sick and that's why such things are happening and that's why it is called Six sinus syndrome. Okay, so let me have an example of ECG tracing here and that will make more sense. So, and if you pay attention, the reason I am drawing this line here is because this is during the same time interval. So, on the same, during the same time, the ECG tracings are going to look different. And why is that? 
because we are having sinus arrhythmia or because we are having sinus tachy or because we are having sinus bradyhy. And now this example we are going to see how would sick sinus syndrome and or how would tachy bradyhy syndrome look like. Okay? So it could go as the name suggests tachy. So it could go like this P Q R T and then P Q R S T and then P Q R S T P Q R S T and then what happens all of a sudden it slows down so then you can have a more pause and then again P Q R S T and then you have more pause and then you have P Q R S T and like that. So this one is sick sinus syndrome, tachy bradyhy syndrome, because SNR is causing such irregularities, either uh, fires rapidly or fires slowly, that is causing tachy faster and or bradyhy the slower. And you could see the P. And you could see the R. Okay. Simple, easy to understand. Now, because dealing with cardiac arrhythmia and focusing on the essay driven arrhythmia, we are looking at uh, not concerning sinus arrhythmia, physiological sinus arrhythmia. We are looking at sinus tachy, we are looking at sinus bradyhy, then we are looking at sick sinus syndrome. And because SA node is our friend, our friend is sick. So what we do? If someone is sick, we don't bother. So let him rest and likewise, why don't we also take a break? And then we will be back again. But look, look at this. This is so simple and so easy that you can do it. Okay. So let's take a break and then we will continue. Take care. Bye now.